So, Morris, since we last spoke and you've had your court appearance or attendance in Cardiff, how have you progressed with the police changing the colour of your machine gun that you allegedly sold as an arms dealer? Can you tell me exactly where you are? Um, Daryl, last time I was here, I was going to the county court in Cardiff and friends who'd been following this for 10 years, 11 years, had come from Jersey, London, Bristol, and quite a few from Cardiff, Wales. So you have a lot of support. Oh yes, um, I, I, I had a, a, a lot of people there. And um, the, the county court action was that I'm suing them and it's taken 10 years to get to court to, to where we are. And of course, I've been locked up for two years for an alleged breach of a restraining order, which was unlawful, but we won't waste time on that one. That's, that would take a week to just to introduce just... the subject. Yes. This machine gun case, the, the, the judge, the learned judge said, right, on the list today is your, your, your judicial review uh, that you've put against G4S and the South Wales Police for the way you were treated in prison. And I said, the way I was treated? I said, I was beaten up, technically, and they carried me out, eight of them, and dumped me outside on the grass and confiscated all my legal papers. That was what they were up to. Sure. And they, every time, nearly every time I've been left, left custody in a prison in Cardiff or Bridport, uh, Brid, Brid, uh, Bridge End, they have made sure that all my legal papers, all my files, so they steal your yeah, yeah, evidence yeah. Well, from they, you. I got out in October and they still won't give them back. And of course, it's the papers for the machine gun yeah. conspiracy. Now, now the parole board, if, if, as soon as they got to hear about all this, they, they got me out of prison. So, you know, it, I could have stayed on for another month until the term finished. But at least they overdid it and they got a parole board hearing and, 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 and the chap from London and my sister, ex-magistrate Celia, she was there and well the, the parole people came in, the, the prison people came in and everybody could see that they were, they said oh he's far too dangerous to be released. But it's out of your control to regain your personal yes, property yes, from the Bridge End prison. jail, the prison that you, that they kept you in. Yes, and who took them? The police. The police were there, the defendants, the QC, the trailing barrister, junior barrister some people call them um a, a, a whole lot of dolman solicitors uh staff so they outnumbered you by very oh, many oh oh they, they always come on tirage uh and and oh they're in trouble they've been lying for 28 years now so strength in numbers the more they can confront well, you with well let, let, let me tell you what happened about the, the jr i think because my friends were in the gallery the judge said, I will let you put that in again. He said, you never sent proof of service. I said, the prison stopped my mail going in and going out. And when they dumped me on the grass, um, somebody came in a car and picked me up. Um, someone came out with a great pile of, pet, of, of letters. Yes. And dumped them on the front seat of this car. And I said, by the time I got to Bristol, I had to go to the hospital because I'd been knocked about. Yeah, because they the, beat you so bad. Yeah, they beat you so bad. X-rays and things. But I went through the pile of court letters. There were letters from family. My letters going out. Letters coming in. But they also had in a separate rubber band the letters from Cardiff Prison. Because while I was there that last year, they moved me from Cardiff Prison to here. So they the, deprived you of oh, your yeah. human right to speak with it's, friends it's, and... The, the civil claim, they've lost, the South Wales Police have lost over 50 malicious prosecutions. That you've taken, yeah, yeah. Yes. And, and let me tell you about the court case, um, and then we'll finish or we'll ramble. The, the, the guy said, right, you can put it in again. He said, now we're going to go to the machine gun case. And he said, you haven't done this, you haven't done that. Well, I can't, because the, Here's the QC. Yes, um, yes, I um, understand. 
I might have used the word quaintly corrupted, but I hope I didn't. And uh, the QC, they know the truth, and I can't get all my legal papers. He's given me a deadline now to do this, 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 and this. And I said, so I th- how will so, you so, obtain so, your paperwork, Morris? So a few weeks ago, here in Taunton, I had two Welsh policemen for four hours in my kitchen taking the information. Oh, go straight in the bin. So why do they waste public funding to come? No, no, they've got to show that I had no grounds. If I say they didn't even come and interview me, Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And they made a day of it. So they're they manipulating were, and it. Nice guys. A couple so, of nice bobbies. And they took all this evidence. In fact, I might even publish it. Um, it I, I consider it confidential, but there comes a time when even I, uh, from the straight and narrow. Um, so the situation now is I've got so many weeks to to serve more papers, and I'm, I can't move. And I, I've... Will you be able to obtain that paperwork? Oh, the other, I was due, I've just finished here. I was due out in March um, and I had sent letters to my MP, who was the Secretary of State for Wales, Alan Cairns, good man. And when I got no answer, I quickly sent a letter to my new MP, um, Rebecca Powell of Taunton. Taunton yeah. And they both received these. The one that went to the House of Commons, they thought was um, heroin. So I was investigated by the police in the prison. And the second one, I sent to her home address in Taunton. And somebody thought that it was anthrax spores. So oh the, whole, the whole of Stoke St. Mary was cordoned off by police. But they knew that the way prisoners stick things on walls um, you use a bit of toothpaste and stick it up and I sent both of them critical critical statements and 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 transcripts to show that I'm not mad and there is the proof of the police conspiracy chief constable this has gone on for 28 years and their excuse for not releasing me is that we can't identify the powder toothpaste so the crime scene investigation or forensics for the police couldn't identify yeah. simple toothpaste. Yeah. And they... Well, of course they did. But they, they had to keep me in prison all the time. So they had to blow out of proportion. I, I was recalled in the first place. I was on parole. Uh, because I had to keep coming to Taunton to see my doctor. Because I couldn't dare risk another Welsh doctor. doctor. No. Um, uh, of course not. Because that's the whole problem of what happened with that with that person yep. um, that, that's taken five years of my life and um, uh, I overslept going back and went sh- and therefore I rang them up on the train I said I've overslept I'm coming out of Cardiff station I'll get out of Bridge End and come back and sign in at the hostel yes a, a map yes. hostel multi-agency yep. public protection arrangement see they had me registered as mapper level three category three in the top five percent most dangerous terrorists but that's for another story Okay. Lovely. Another time. Let's have a cup of tea. Yeah, I'll have a cup of tea.